All right, kiddos. Um, so this is our final. This is the final installment of Civil War and Reconstruction, a review for a test. I know I haven't called it that and other things, but you know, before it was a working title, and now that's the final title of this wonderful, cinematic, joyous, I don't even know what other words to use, but it's going to be awesome. Okay, so Reconstruction, this is our final conclusion. What are we going to do after the Civil War, after everything's, after everything's happened? Well, we have a couple plans. We have Lincoln's 10% plan. Remember, Lincoln was all about preserving the Union, unifying us. He didn't want hard feelings. He kind of wanted to say, no hard feelings, guys. Let's just get through this. Jeffers, uh, Johnson was a little bit tougher because um, remember Lincoln is shot and so he can't, we can't go through if that happened to him. Lincoln gets shot. Um, Johnson's plan, even though Johnson is the president, he can't get his pan plan passed because there are radical Republicans Reconstruction. Um, Okay, that says Reconstruction, just assume that it does. Um, there are radical Republicans currently in um, Congress, and this is, I'm going to put little parentheses, Congress. And they are angry at the South, they don't care who knows it. So, they are hard on the South. They show very little mercy when the South doesn't agree or doesn't do something that um, they believe that they should be doing. So, they're going to separate them. I don't know what color to use. They separate the South into military, to actually, I would say five, military. Think of the word. Guys, remember this one? I said it was kind of like the Hunger Games because as a reminder to the rebel, bell, bleh, as a reminder to the rebels of their previous disobedience, each of the ten states, the ten remaining Confederate states were divided into five military districts. There we go. Military districts. They're divided into five military districts. The next thing, they gave full rights Full. I don't know. I know that's a little awkward for those who are lowercase and he's upper. These two are uppercase, but you know what? That's a crazy day. I'll fix it because it's going to bother me. Full. Okay. Full rights to African Americans. And guys, those are having to do with um, the amendments that we're going to talk about. Oh, someone else is getting a nice frozen beverage. It's fantastic. It gave full rights to African Americans. We'll talk about the amendments in just a second. And Confederates, former Confederates, are not allowed to vote or run for public office. Which is pretty harsh. It's kind of taken away a lot of their rights as Americans in general. Um, and guys, this is going to go on until about 1877, so it's a pretty long time, but at that point, um, the president at the time says Reconstruction is officially ended, all is well here in America. But before that happens, part of giving full rights, part of this, these, these full rights are the amendments. And guys, you will thank us for hitting this. I don't even know what to say. Amendments. They helped recently. Freed slaves. They helped them really achieve the um, the freedom, the independence, and the recognition they felt like they deserved. Um, these amendments were the 13th, 14th, and 15th. Free, so this one, freed the slaves. Uh, gave, this one gave citizenship. 
to slaves. This, gave, this freed the slaves. This one gave citizenship to former slaves, to African Americans. Um, gave voting. Um, gave voters rights. Okay, so this gave um, African Americans the right to vote. Free citizens vote. Okay, free citizens vote. If you can remember that, you'll remember 13th, 14th, 15th, free citizens vote. 13th frees the slaves, 14th gives them citizenship, 15th um, vote versus, um, oh, sorry, vote, or see, sometimes I can't even read my own writing. Voters' rights. Gave them the right to vote. Um, uh, gave vote rights, because the RS is just making me confused. Okay, gave them the right to vote. Remember, the South is going to do some ugly things here. Um, they're going to instigate a poll tax, literacy tests, and the lovely grandfather clause in order to prevent slaves from voting. And that's where you're going to kind of be picking up uh, when you get into high school your junior year. So this is actually kind of one of our last things we're going to be learning about as far as sequential history goes. Um, so this is the final installment of 8th grade U.S. history, which is kind of weird and a little bit sad, because I know you're going to be missing my videos next year and tuning into my channel whenever you can. Okay, this is all. Um, study for your test. Your test is on Tuesday. Um, trying to think if there's anything more I need to tell you. Nope. Okay, enjoy. Have a good Easter weekend.